Hello again, high school lacrosse fans, and welcome to the season finale of the Lax Rats Lax Rat. He's the chief. I'm Chopper. Love being here with you guys, and hopefully people got out and saw those games this week. Uh, the playoffs were something else, huh? Yeah, a lot of fun. You know, we, we, there are a couple upsets, but I don't think there are upsets. We talked about this before that, you know, two, three through 15 are all pretty com competitive games. Good enough. Let's get to the top 10 teams, and we won't spend a lot of time on this, Chief, but I'm, you know, I, I love looking at the top end of that because a couple teams made it into the final top 10 that haven't been there in years past. Why don't you start with number 10? That's right. Sierra Canyon at number 10 going in the right direction. They went 12-2. and two. They lost by one in playoffs. Uh, you know, a lot to be proud of. That program is definitely being led by Mario Weibel, definitely going in the right direction. Uh, you know, new and, top 10. And we wondered how they would do once they got into the playoffs, right? Because you weren't sure about their schedule. They acquitted themselves quite well in the playoffs. Yeah, they competed. They lost by one, you know, and a one game loss. You know, maybe if they had a stronger schedule, they would have been used to playing at that speed. But they show that they belong in the top 10 for sure. And maybe they can go further next year. Uh, no doubt about it, they will. Okay, coming back at number nine, another team that kind of moved up later in the year. Happy to talk about them, Oaks Christian, right? Oaks Christian, it's not how you start the year, it's how you finish the year. They start, they finished the year with two big wins. They ended up losing in playoffs, you know, into Steamroller Loyola. But up until then, they beat Thatcher. Um, two, two great wins to end the season. Young young team offensively, defensively, those kids are great. Uh, you know, a bright feature with Coach Siebert at, at the helm. We were thinking they might pull off an upset in the playoffs, not picking on Loyola, but uh, they were a hot team at the end. Yeah, they were playing great lacrosse, and like I said, defensively, those, those kids can get up and down the field. Cool. Okay, Chief, who you got at number eight? I have Thousand Oaks, and you know, it's a team I don't really know what to make of them. Pretty, a 500 year lax power has them a little bit higher, and, and so far as higher, like further away from top 10. But, uh, you know, th they play good lacrosse, they win games, they have athletes. They're at eight. Uh, like I said, I don't know enough about them, but, uh, sure. you know. Well, you know, and, and Lax Power uses a, a formula, right? I mean, they've got numerical rankings, and those are valid in one case, but I don't think they take into account end of year uh, how they're pushing. And, frankly, they don't have the eyes and ears of the Chiefs. So, uh, That's right. We try to keep our finger on the pulse, but, you know, we can only see so much. All right. So uh, that brings us to number seven. Seven, another program that, uh, you know, has, I believe turned the corner, Chaminade, well coached by Steve Lane. They got a lot of guys leaving, though. They got some seniors leaving. I know they have kids coming back, but they're, they're sending kids to Ohio Wesleyan. The face-off kid, Delante, going to uh, Cal Berkeley. Their goalie could play in college if he wants. He was injured at the end of the year, but definitely a program, uh, you know, an upset. They were, they were seated, I think, 13, 12 or 13, and uh, made it through the first round of playoffs. So they got a lot going for them this year. Yeah, as I recall, in a preseason top 10, they weren't anywhere to be seen. So a great season for Shamanat. Congratulations to those guys. That's right. Okay, coming in at number six, the team I kept talking about all year at Gura. They played the rough schedule. They were in every game, lost a couple of tough ones. But it came on well at the end of the year and uh, you know played well in the playoffs, even though they didn't go deep. Right. Agora's a team I love. I loved playing against them. Those kids were such cool kids in so far as they played for the spirit of the game. They played with reckless abandonment. They were flying, throwing their bodies. But you know we're, they were down one goal. Our player turns to our player and said, uh, this is so much fun. How much fun is this? And it just showed you know what the sport was about. So besides them being very good defensively, their face-off kids lights out. Their goalies lights out. They got some kids that can put the ball on the goal. I think, you know, right now they're at uh, six. Awesome season for Agoura. And if you look at the losses they had early in the year, glad to see them climb the ranks and get right outside the top five. That's right. A ton of respect for Agoura. A lot of fun that program is. All right. Okay, that's the, the bottom five of the uh, top ten. We're going to go to number five now as we get into the elite territory. Who you got there? I got my uh, Peninsula Panthers. I didn't give them that much love all year. You know, it's tough when you have a horse in the race. But when you beat teams who beat you in the beginning of the year, you always want to end on a high note. And uh, we lost to Miracosa at the beginning of the year, came back, put a, put a bit, pretty big whooping on them, and then uh, went and played Agora on the road, under the lights, playoffs, and we managed to squeak one out in overtime. So those are two teams we lost to and ended up beating. Um, says a lot about the program. And of course, yeah, you guys won last, so I would put you ahead of Agura. Makes sense. Yeah. In fact, if you hadn't run into a pretty rough Westlake team, who knows? Maybe you guys would have gone deeper. Yeah, and, and once again, that Westlake team, I'm sure, I, they're so good. I thought they were so good, so deep. You know, PB had their number that day, but sure, the team is good. We'll talk more about them. Okay, brings us to the top four. Who do you have at number four? Number four, I have Harvard Westlake. Uh, you know, I think the argument is Harvard Westlake versus Westlake, but I don't think that Harvard Westlake has the depth. So I have 
Harper West, like at four, I think they completely overachieved, which is which is kudos to them. You know, they had a great, great year. They got kids getting the most out of each player on each game. They took it to Loyola. They were up until the fourth quarter. Really fun to watch that game, led by Filthy Phil Thompson. Um, they were the last team to win a half against Loyola. I mean, right. at that point, Loyola was smoking everybody. So hats off to uh, Harvard Westlake. That's right. That brings us to number three, Chief the Uni. The Uni's got them to number three, but that was as far as Westlake went. That's as far as they go, and I think we're going to retire those uniforms this year. I think, you know, my kids kept saying, Coach, lax rats, why do you guys give them so much props on our unis? I'm like, they look clean. Um, Primary colors. That's what they're, the primary colors. They're doing something right at West. Like they just came at us in waves. I mean, I, I it was the first time coaching in my coaching career. I had nothing to say because we just got pummeled by them. Um, they're very deep in the midfielder. Their faceoff kid was lights out. Uh, Brett Riley. I was saying, you know, I, he's one of my favorite players to watch. All of a sudden, he throws one behind the back for an assist. Uh, you know, they're good. They're very good. They're very deep. They ran into a steamroller, PV, who was much better that day. But they, they played agree. PV on PV's best day, That's and right. PV wore them out in the fourth quarter. Oh, I mean, absolutely. It, 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 just with fresh troops, human wave attack. But great season for Westlake. Uh, you guys cost uh, Mark had had a steak dinner that he had to pay to Strider, of all people. But uh, great season for you guys, and uh, hopefully great things for you guys next year. Right. Brings us to the top two, and this went back and forth all year. And before you get to two and one, the Loyola and PV played early in the year, and it was even for you know well they went overtime right PV won that one, they went they played a whole nother you know 48 minutes or whatever it is even again on in the playoffs so as even as two top teams have ever been not only in the standings but also on the field right that's right those guys you know all year we're talking about them and each team says oh we're better than the other team oh we're better than the other team but uh, you know those teams are, are pretty evenly matched. Yeah. yeah. In fact, and they're ideal foils. You've got a you've got a high scoring, fast swinging team like PV. You've got a counter punching team like Loyola. Two great matchups, and what a great final for us to call. Oh, it was so much fun. That game was awesome. And, and like I said, that first game they played was boring. They played tight. This game was the exact opposite. Yeah. Those guys played loose. They had fun. They flew around. My boy Sean Smith, four goals. I thought though uh, the kid eight. Let, we'll talk about uh, PV. Let's, who's coming in at number two? Okay, so we'll let's talk about number two, Palos Verdes, right? right? So coming in at number two, we have the Sea Kings. No longer the Land King, Sea Kings, Palos Verdes, great season. You know, just one goal short. Sure. And, uh, and that's it. It could be the, the, the best team that they've had, and it still could be the best team they've had, but ran into Loyola. You betcha. Great bunch of kids. We've been talking about those kids since they were eighth graders, that's right? right? And a bunch of them are heading off to college careers. And so congratulations to you guys because you guys played, not only did you play great lacrosse, it was very entertaining lacrosse. I'm sure you motivated a lot of kids who were watching you play to want to play more lacrosse. You played a tough schedule, 19 game winning streak in the middle of a, in between a couple losses. So congrats to the CK. That's right. And just a little plug here is that I've been called a PV homer and it's probably the truth. I've watched these kids grow up from, you know, sixth grade on. So of course I'm going to give them love. I'm so proud of them. They did a great job this year. They played great. And, uh, you know, it was a, a fun group to watch. Absolutely. Two spots. Which brings us to, drum roll, mm -hmm. number one, Loyola Cubs. You guys did it. Congratulations to you guys. What were your thoughts on these guys? That's right. New king of the land right now. I think Loyola, the pendulum has swung, and I think it's going to stay over here for a little bit. Um, they managed to let the, the their work do the talk for once, which was nice to see. And they went out and, and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with PV. I really like that face-off kid, Aiden Hess. That kid has a really nice feature ahead of him. Um, winning draws. He went... 50% against that kid from CDM. That kid from CDM is known as one of the best kids in the nation, not only in, the, in LA, but in the nation. Um, and Hess went 50%, so that says a lot about him. We'll talk more about them when we get to top 10 plays because they're all over the place, but uh, awesome season for, uh, for Loyola, and uh, there's somebody else here that wants to, uh, to give them a nod. Okay, we are back with Strider. This is all that's left of the steak dinner that Mark sent him, the, uh, the fearless bone. You got that? Mm -hmm. And Strider, you remember this play? This is the uh, the original ball that he picked for Loyola. You like that, brother? Yes, he does. So Strider, here you go, brother. Strider picked Loyola all year long, in spite of uh, Chia, the uh, our producer picking Westlake and Chief and I were picking PV from time to time. Strider saw it all the way. Strider was so successful that he is opening a new website. It's called StriderKnowsAll.com. He'll tell fortunes, pick stocks, whatever you want. Go to StriderKnowsAll. Say hi to this look. look. That's how I'm going, boy. <laughs> StriderKnowsAll.com. Go get it. Okay, we're back with top ten plays. First one is a Loyola play. They were uh, behind.
Watch here the catch and the filthy backhand without even coming down. And that's Mason O'Hanlon. He had such a good playoff run. I was saying I wanted to see more of him. I saw more of him. MVP of that final game. Number nine starts with a good D. Watch Jack Lark and D stick his man. And anytime there's a loose ball, you know who's going to get that for PV, right? It's a human vacuum, Jared Jones, clearly. He's going to find Austin Lowi, and I was screaming to Lowi he ought to be shooting this ball. Look how open he is, but he sees something better, right, Chief? It's called unselfish lacrosse. Sharing's Karen. Well done, Lowi. There you go. But Hanlon's going to uh, feed Jonathan Partamian. And watch that rip. Ooh, and that's how it, Yeah, I got deflected. I'm sure they called the bank for sure. Syracuse knowledge. Number seven is going to be from the same game. This is uh, Henry Hasenberg from X. Can't even get his arms free on this shot, but watch that jerk, little jerk the hands and bingo. He does a great job. Plays kind of like a Canadian front hand, back hand. Now a chance to sit back and watch some stout defense from the Loyola goalie. Uh, you were a former goalie. How big is it for your team when you're making saves like this? It can tell that he's seeing the ball. It's for, it's confidence going one way, knowing that you. You know, you can press out because you have, you have that kid behind you. So Thoyer coming up huge. In both games. He, he kept Loyola in it in the middle of the PV game when Palos Verdes was trying to come back. And he was the defensive MVP of that championship game. Rightly so. One last save, and I think he'll kill the clock here on his own. Got to feel good about that one, Thoyer. So it was on to the finals for the guys, led by their goalie. And we're going to switch over for number... Uh, Number five, and get you some final game action here. You know, Hanlon's at it again, this time from X. I love this move. Had, had him matched up against a short stick. They were inverting all night that night, weren't they? Yep, smart move. Okay, um, and he shh, quiet everybody down. Aiden Hess from X. This was another key for Loyola through both the semis and the finals. Face off, get off, not with him. Oh, this is such a great goal. Huge for momentum. This kid, quite a future, like I said. The kid he went against was one of the best in the nation. Now, if the PV had won, this might have been our top play. Watch Hinkhouse create time and room for himself. And then look at this P. That's a seed. Hinkhouse hands free. Him a little quieting as well. Must have been noisy night. Okay, keep an eye on this guy off ball. Ryder Moore is going to get things started. He's going to get it up to Hasenberg on the top. And then he's going to show the vision, find Tommy Riley right in front. Wide open, handling it under pressure. That's a huge goal to tie the game, to keep the Cubs alive. And number one is going to be all about number three. Regulation hat trick in the finals. And several of these goals against Shane Sharp, PV's best defender. Who do you go to in championship games? Obviously your senior captain. I think this was his third one in regulation. This was nasty, low to high. Feeling. Finally, overtime. The whole season's on the line. Who do you go to? That's right. Same guy. It's Mr. Smith. And that's the winner. That's the goal that sends the Cubs into the uh, Orange County LA Championship. Happy bunch of guys. And, uh, you know, coming from behind again after they've given up a late lead. And there's mayhem and Sue's celebrating. Little did we know that night that they were going to go on to knock off uh, the Orange County champion. So, after beating Palos Verdes, which was a huge feat in itself, Loyola goes down and handles Corona Del Mar. A lot of people were picking Corona Del Mar, picking the Orange County champion. Loyola, in, in, during the regular season, Palos Verdes was averaging 13 and a quarter goals a game. In two games, Loyola held them to six goals each time. Corona Del Mar was even doing better. They were averaging 14 and a half goals a game. Loyola holds them to six goals. That zone, you know, we talked about that zone. We tried finding faults in that zone, but when it comes down to it, the numbers don't lie. And the thing is, it's not always the zone, it's who's playing the zone. And hats off to all six kids at a time playing that zone because it's hard to do. I mean, if it were easy, everybody would do it, right? Right. And uh, they held two great teams to below half of their scoring average. So Yeah, the, the zone ended up becoming uh, an awesome weapon for them. You know, I guess it took them a while to finally fully gel, but when they did, enough to beat CDM, and CDM is one of the best teams I've seen so far. And you never like to lose, but I imagine Palos Verdes could take some consolation in realizing just how good Loyola was after they went down and handled CDM. All right, so that's going to be it for this season's highlights, this season's top ten teams. I just want to mention something to you. You know, I, I got involved in the high school lacrosse scene 10 or 12 years ago when Zach got involved with it. And the thing that really impressed me about the lacrosse community was how kind they were to one another. You know, to me, it seemed like a quote, a secondary sport, not as much money, 
uh, involved in it, not as much glory. The kids that were playing it were playing it for the sport and not for the glory. Same with the parents, same with the coaches. That's what drew us, and uh, I'm just hoping it stays like that. But, you know, there's a lot of pressure. It's, it's a lot of pressure, and, you know, the more it grows, the more people are involved. It loses its intimate feel, which is too bad. But, you know, it, it's up to Loyola right now to carry the torch and to act like a champion and to show what it means to be sportsmen. You need to respect the people that came before you, teach the people that come after you, and, uh, you know, carry this game the way it's meant. It's a, it's a spiritual game. It's a medicine game. It came from our natives. And, uh, you know, I think respect is something that we need to bring back, and I hope it starts with the new champions, Loyola. Well, we've made a lot of friends on that Loyola side, parents and players both. And, you know, it's always it's always a minority that can mess that up. Right. But, you know, I would just tell all of you lacrosse players, all you fans, if you get a chance to do the right thing, to ignore a slight or to, to say something gracious rather than something cutting, it's going to keep the game pure the way it was when, when I first got involved with it and probably when you did too. That's right. We're all in this together. We're all having fun. Lax Rats, Max Lax, high school lacrosse. It's been a great little year and, uh, you know, hopefully we can con continue to grow in a positive way. I want to thank everybody that's been involved with the programs. If the kids weren't playing and the coaches weren't coaching, we wouldn't have anything right. to talk about, right? And if the parents weren't supporting it, we wouldn't have anybody watching us. But we've had maybe the most enjoyable year we've had at Lax Rats and looking forward to many, many more. So I want to say congrats and thanks to coaches, players, parents, and officials. Um, and I want to wish everybody a great spring and summer. Hopefully we'll be back to you with some content. Um, but I'll, for the last time, I'll say he's the chief. I'm Chopper. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you next time.